Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Photosynthesis in Higher Plants. Today we will learn the second phase of photosynthesis that is dark reaction. We learned photosynthesis occurs in two phases that is light reaction and a dark reaction. We learned in detail what is happening during light reaction and we learned at the end two energy rich compounds ATP and NADPH are produced. Here, utilizing that energy in the ATP and NADPH, carbon dioxide will be reduced to carbohydrate. All the enzymes required for this process are found in the stroma of the chloroplast. As a result, dark reaction is happening in the stroma. Now, it has got several names. The biosynthetic phase means the second phase is the synthesis of carbohydrate happening. So, it is called a biosynthetic phase. It is also called a dark reaction. It is a misnomer. Dark reaction does not mean that it will happen in dark, but it is independent of light because whether light is present or absent, dark reaction can continue, but only utilizing the product formed during light reaction. Now, it is also called a Calvin cycle because a scientist called a Melvin Calvin, he found the path of carbon in this particular cycle. So, it is named after him Calvin cycle and Calvin was awarded Nobel Prize in 1961 for this discovery. It is also called a C3 cycle because here the first stable compound formed is phosphoglyceric acid, 3-phosphoglyceric acid which is a 3-carbon compound. So since it is a 3-carbon compound, it is called a C3 cycle also. One more name, Blackman's reaction because it is a biochemical phase in which biochemical reactions are happening. Those biochemical reactions were explained by Blackman. So it is named after him also Blackman's reaction. So all these names you should know that all these indicate to the second phase of photosynthesis that is called a dark reaction. In which what is happening? Carbon Carbohydrate is produced from carbon dioxide. It occurs actually in three steps. First step is carboxylation. In light reaction, we learned addition of phosphorus was called a phosphorylation. So, addition of carbon dioxide is called a carboxylation. Then second is reduction. Here, carbon dioxide is getting reduced to carbohydrate. And also, uh, there is a carbon dioxide acceptor in plant because without that, carbon dioxide cannot come in. So, that is called a RUBP, rubulose biphosphate. RUBP should be regenerated in order for the cycle to continue. So that's the third step, regeneration of RUBP. Now we will try to understand the overall reaction of a dark reaction or the second phase of photosynthesis. So as I mentioned, it happens in three stages, carboxylation, reduction and regeneration. In carboxylation, a carbon dioxide acceptor called a RUBP, rubulose bisphosphate, is actually accepting carbon dioxide. Initially, there was a confusion because we learned the first stable product formed is a 3 carbon compound. It has got 3 carbon molecules in it. Okay. So, suppose there are 3 carbon molecules in it. It is formed by the addition of carbon dioxide with something else. Okay. So, we have to get 3 carbon here. Carbon dioxide has 1 carbon. So, naturally, how many carbons would be there in that acceptor RUBP? 2 carbon, right? So, 2 carbon plus 1 carbon, we get 3 carbon, right? So, scientists also believe that way and they spend a lot of time finding out a 2 carbon carbon dioxide acceptor in plants, but they couldn't. Later only they realized it is not a 2 carbon compound, but it is a 5 carbon compound. So, 5 carbon compound, if it is uh, combining with a 1 molecule of carbon dioxide, the resulting product or the compound will have how many carbon? 5 plus 1, 6 carbon. Okay, but we have only 3 carbon compounds. So actually what happens is, initial stage, this 5 carbon compound RUBP will be combining with the carbon dioxide to form a 6 carbon compound. This 6 carbon compound will, is it, it is unstable. So it will split into 2 3 carbon compound. But for one molecule of glucose to form, 6 carbon dioxide molecules need to be absorbed by the plant. So here, 6 RUBP molecules will be receiving 6 carbon dioxide molecule forming a 6 carbon compound. 
How many six carbon compound? Six six carbon compound. Now, this six carbon compound will split into twelve molecules of three phosphoglyceric acid. This is a three carbon compound, and this is the first stable product forming here. So that process is called a carboxylation. So carboxylation is nothing but RuBP receives carbon dioxide and end up in the formation of a three carbon molecule called a phosphoglyceric acid. So this process is called a carboxylation reaction. Enzyme required for this process to happen is Rubisco. Rubisco stands for ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. It has got both reaction catalyzation properties like it can catalyze carboxylation as well as oxygenation about that we will learn later. So Rubisco is one of the largest and the most abundant protein in the universe because we know every green plant conducting photosynthesis has got uh, RU, uh, Rubisco in it. Okay. Now coming to the second stage that is called a reduction reaction. So here number of molecules and number of carbon in that molecule you should not get confused. Suppose glucose. Glucose has 6 carbon in it. But how many molecules I am taking may differ. I can take one molecule. I can take two molecules or three molecules differs. Okay. Now second stage is the reduction. Here what is getting reduced? Phosphoglyceric acid is getting reduced to Phosphoglyceraldehyde. Last year you learned the functional group. Acid means what? COOH. Whereas aldehyde is CHO group. Right. So here it is happening uh, in two steps. First step what happens? We have 12 molecules of PGA. Right. Which is a 3 carbon compound. So three, this 3 carbon PGA will be combining with the 12 molecules of ATP. From where did we get the ATP? We got the ATP from the light reaction. So those 12 ATP molecules will be utilized here and as a result we get 1,3-phosphoglyceric acid that is 1,3-di-PGA or bi-PGA we can say plus 12 ADP. So if you remember 3-PGA stands for a PGA molecule with the phosphate group in the third carbon. So here 1,3-PGA means what? Already third carbon had got a one uh, phosphate group. Now first carbon also getting phosphate from the ATP. Right. So it is becoming 1,3-PGA and ATP turned into ADP. These are the positions in which of the carbon in which phosphate groups are attached. First if I say PGA, it is a 3 carbon compound. It has carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3. Now what happens is ATP means 3 phosphate group we added. Right. Now I am taking back one phosphate. So what is left? ADP is left. That is 12 ADP. And the phosphate which we removed is already it had one phosphate in the phosphoglyceric acid. No, it has a phosphate group. One more phosphate is added. So that's why 1 comma 3. These are the positions of the carbon. First carbon and third carbon. Phosphoglyceric acid uh, has got phosphate now. So as a result we are getting 12 ADP also. So that means basically ATP is broken down into ADP. Now what is what did we get? 1,3-phosphoglyceric acid. That 12 molecules are there. Now we are utilizing the NADPH that we got from light reaction. So 12 NADPH will combine with this to form 12-phosphoglyceraldehyde. So acid has turned into aldehyde in the presence of NADPH and NADPH is turning into NADP. Actually this is redu reduction reaction. Phosphoglyceric acid got reduced to aldehyde. Phosphoglyceraldehyde. So this phosphoglyceraldehyde is otherwise called a triose phosphate. In NCRT it is given triose phosphate. It is another name of PGAL and the enzyme required here is triose phosphate dehydrogenase. Okay. So this is the second step that is carboxylation over now reduction. In reduction what is getting reduced? PGA gets reduced to PGAL in two steps. First utilizing ATP it becomes 1,3-PGA. Then 1,3-PGA used utilizing NADPH becomes uh, the PGAL. Okay. Now what is our product? We have 12-PGAL with us. But we cannot use this 12-PGAL for making carbohydrate because RUBP getting over. Because every time it is becoming the PGA, right? So we have to regenerate the carbon dioxide acceptor RUBP or else photosynthesis will stop there. So for that, we have 10 PGAL, uh, so total 12 PGAL, right? Out of that, 10 PGAL is utilized for making RUBP. So that in majority, we are using for making RUBP. 
we have we need another 6 ATP for this process. So this PGAL will combine with 6 ATP to form 5 RUBB molecule because this is a PGAL is becoming RUBB which is 5 carbon compound and this ATP is becoming ADP because phosphate is given here. Now how many PGAL left? Only 2 PGAL left for making carbohydrate. So for every 6 carbon dioxide plant is receiving, what is the output that we are getting for making carbohydrate? Only 2 PGAL because 10 we need back for continuing the reaction. So last 2 PGAL is now turning into fructose 6-phosphate that is a 6 carbon compound, fructose is a 6 carbon compound and this fructose 6-phosphate will now turn into glucose or fructose uh, that is a final product of photosynthesis. Okay, so that is the last stage, 12 PGAL formed during reduction, out of that 10 is utilized for making RUBP in the presence of ATP. Rest 2 PGAL will get converted into fructose 6-phosphate and eventually it becomes glucose or fructose which is the product. Now here also it is not a single step in which this is happening. There are many intermediate compounds forming like EMP. EMP stands for erythrose monophosphate, XMP cellulose monophosphate, SHMP pseudoheptulose monophosphate or ribulose monophosphate. These are the intermediate compounds through which this is finally becoming RUBP. So if we summarize the entire photosynthesis in one single equation, we know 6 molecules of RUBP combines with the 6 molecules of carbon dioxide and it utilizes 18 ATP total, first 12 molecules of ATP and later 6 molecules of ATP for regeneration and 12 molecules of NADPH for reduction of this 1,3 PGA to PGAL. So as a result what do we get? We regenerate RUBP back and also we have 1 molecule of glucose. Then 18 ATP became 18 ADP and 18 phosphate group and NADP H turned into NADP. So here remember for one molecule of glucose we need 6 molecules of carbon dioxide. And another interesting fact here is we know that the dark reaction can happen in the absence of light also. But it has been noticed that if, if more than the continuous light if there is flashing light then the carbon dioxide for uh, reduction rate that means the photosynthesis or dark reaction rate is higher than in the continuous light. So we can say that the rate of photosynthesis is controlled by the dark reaction not by the light reaction. So rate limiting step of photosynthesis is dark reaction. Hope you understood all these concepts well. If so, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching.